Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Mushroom Dungeon. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use my simple in-bag hardwood fuel pellet pasteurization method to turn one bag of store-bought sawdust spawn into three bags. So on the right here, I have some wine cap spawn, wine cap strafaria, and on the left, I have some bluet spawn. I purchased both of these bags from a online supplier. They're 5.5 pounds a piece and we're gonna turn each one of these into three. So no fancy tools required here, guys. You're just gonna need some, some simple supplies. I just have a plastic juice container sitting on top of a digital food scale. Scale goes to five pounds, which is plenty for what we're doing here. And what we're gonna be doing first is weighing up our dry fuel pellets. So I'm gonna be using 3T filter patch bags. These are 3T bags right from unicorn bags that I purchased in bulk and we're going to be using hardwood fuel pellets. These are locally produced in New York, just natural hardwood fuel pellets and that's going to be our spawn expansion substrate. So first we're going to be weighing out our hardwood fuel pellets. So we want to weigh out exactly one pound eight ounces of dry hardwood fuel pellets into each of our substrate bags. If you're, you know, an eighth of an ounce one way or the other, not a big deal, but we do want to be pretty exact here because moisture balance is pretty critical when you're dealing with mushroom substrate. So try and get it pretty close. Once you get your fuel pellets weighed up, just dump them into each bag. And in the meantime, I actually have some water boiling upstairs on the stove. So that's what we're going to use to pasteurize our fuel pellets. So get your bags all together and we're going to move upstairs next to the stove so we can do our pasteurization. We are set up in the kitchen for this part of the process. And just off camera, I have a large canning pot of boiling water all ready to go on the stove. I also have this handy dandy funnel that I made out of a gallon plastic jug. Just cut the top and the bottom off. It's going to help hold our bag open while we pour our water in. So we are working with boiling water here, guys. So be careful. Wear gloves if you need them. And we are looking to weigh up exactly two pounds of boiling water to add to our fuel pellets. So I'm using a Pyrex measuring cup here to get it exact. Then we're going to pour it into our fuel pellets and that's going to pasteurize and perfectly hydrate them. So next we are moving over to our impulse sealer. So this is a 12 inch impulse sealer. It's on the number five setting. Every impulse sealer is different. So you have to figure out your specific model, but you hold it down and it's pretty crucial to, even after the heat cycle is finished, hold that arm down for about 10 seconds. You don't want to pop it up too soon or you could rip your bag. If you don't have an impulse sealer, guys, you could just use a zip tie or some butcher's twine to seal your bag up, cinch it up at the top but uh, you do definitely want it sealed for this part of the process. Once you've added the boiling water to each one of your bags, the goal is to maintain that heat for at least 60 minutes. So I'm using a storage tote here. You can also use a cooler, but if you're using a storage tote, just stack your bags in there, put the lid on, and you can wrap it in some towels or a blanket just to help maintain that heat for about 60 minutes. After the timer goes off, the next step is to cool these bags down to room temp. So we're back down in the basement now, I'm just spacing them out on the table. It's very important to never inoculate hot substrate because it's just going to kill your spawn. Once our bags are fully cool, we are ready to inoculate them with our store-bought spawn. I'm set up on my table here in front of my flow hood, but I want you guys to understand that a flow hood is not necessary for this process. I have friends that I've taught how to do this, and they just do it in a clean room, spray everything down with isopropyl, and still have really high success rates. We definitely want to break up your spawn very thoroughly. Breaking these bags up is going to take a good bit of elbow grease, but it's worth the effort because we want every little bit of that mycelium carrying substrate broken up before we mix it in. We're going to be starting with our wine caps and we're going to start by just carefully cutting the tops off of each of our bags, including our master spawn bag. Everything, including my gloves and the scissors, have been sprayed down with 70% isopropyl. It's important to keep everything as sanitized as possible when doing this process. So the goal here is just to evenly distribute the spawn from our master bag into our three bags. It doesn't have to be exact, but you do want to get it as close as possible. Now 
Once all the spawn is into our bags, we need to seal them up again. I'm going to be using my impulse sealer here again, but as I mentioned before, there's lots of different ways to seal these bags. A zip tie, some butcher's twine, some string, whatever you have around. Just make sure you get them nice and tight. And always seal them above the filter patch because we need the substrate exposed to that filter patch so we can get our fresh air exchange. I'm also going to be inoculating a couple bags here with some grain spawn that I made previously. This is some reishi grain spawn for another project, but I just wanted to show you guys what it looked like. Really similar process, just shake that grain up, drop it in the bags, and reseal. So now we need to shake our bags after they're resealed and evenly distribute all that spawn. But first I'm going to check for leaks. I'm just going to give the bag a gentle squeeze and listen. Usually if there's an air leak, you can hear it. If it sounds good, we're going to go ahead and start shaking up our bag. Again, the shaking process requires quite a bit of elbow grease. It's a good forearm workout, but it is pretty necessary. You want to make sure you get all those little spawn bits evenly distributed around the bag, give it a good shake. It's going to evenly distribute the moisture and your spawn and uh, it's going to make sure you get nice, clean, fast colonization. This is what your bag should look like once you're done shaking. Everything should look nice and even and homogenized. So the last step is just to move them to some incubation shelves. You don't want your blocks touching because they will generate some heat as the substrate colonizes. Wire shells work well, just space them out a little bit, and we'll check back on them in a couple weeks. I pulled a couple of the bags off the shelves. I wanted to show you what two weeks worth of growth looks like on these spawn expansion bags. Our wine cap on the left here, you can see is fully colonized. That is ready to go to sub. The bluet is getting close. Both of these species will stall on you and they actually stall way worse on sterilized substrate. They actually prefer pasteurized substrate. I didn't have to do any additional shaking on the wine caps. With the bluets, it looks like this bag is going to be fine, but you may have to do one additional shake, shake everything thoroughly just to get them fully colonized. When you're working with pasteurized substrate, doing one additional shake isn't going to greatly increase your risk of contamination. So if you need to do it, go ahead and do it. It is species dependent, but both bluets and wine caps do like to stall on you, sometimes even on pasteurized substrate. Although, as I mentioned, they are way worse on sterilized. They actually prefer pasteurized substrate, so this method works great for them. But this method will work for any wood loving species. So, as I've mentioned in my previous videos, I want you guys to support the commercial spawn suppliers, you know, but you don't have to give them all your money. So go ahead and buy some spawn from them and uh, expand it out yourself. Save yourself a bunch of money and you can get some beautiful spawn bags like this ready to go to your outdoor beds or your indoor experiments, whatever you're going to do with them. So you're probably looking at two to four weeks total colonization time before these bags are ready to go to sub. Just one last clip, just because I know somebody was going to say, you can't shake sawdust bags. What's wrong with you, man? It's going to contaminate. Well... When you're doing this pasteurized deal, it's a little different and you can shake them. It's true that when you're working with highly supplemented sterilized substrate, shaking your bag does increase your contamination risk quite a bit. But with this pasteurization, it does not, especially with these wine caps and these bluets. So this is one of the bluet bags. Right after that last clip, I actually shook up all three of my bluet bags and now they all look like this nice and white fluffy just well i mean they are fully colonized but i'm gonna let them go just a little longer and thicken up and if you remember back to how that original store-bought spawn bag of bluet spawn looked this actually looks way healthier and that's the magic of pasteurization so I'm probably gonna let this go one more week and then we're gonna start a little project see if we can grow some bluets for this fall so now I'm really going to shut up, but thanks for watching, guys. As always, I appreciate all your support. Hit me up in comments. Let me know what you think. Check out my Patreon page if you get a chance. Got some cool perks there. And that is it. So I will catch you next video.